So Thomas Swan is the director of business development for a company called Retrieve Medical. And if you were on a little bit early tonight, what, what you would know is that Retrieve Medical was one of the four finalists for the ASEP 2020 Innovation Awards. So Tom, looking forward to hearing all about Retrieve Medical. So my name is Tom Swan. I'm, it's an exciting time for Retrieve uh, Medical, and I'm you know, looking forward to presenting our uh, software. It's called Retrieve DX. So what are the major deficiencies with electronic medical records? It's the difficulty to document. So EMRs have become a waste of time. Sitting down at the end of a long shift, eight to 10 hours to document just doesn't make any sense. It's impossible to do your work and do it properly. So what has the ER done? It's, it's, uh, it, or it's, it not into, it's not an intuitive system, right? So while it has all of the info that's out there, it's difficult to access. So it's turned, it's made ED staff become glorified secretaries. They're chasing doctors back and forth to get uh, diagnoses written on a chart in order to get reimbursement, take care of the patient, patient. Sometimes doctors write things shorthand. They need things written out in the proper language. They need uh, time stamps and codes and stuff. So it, uh, though the information is all there for them, these EMRs are difficult to, to navigate, right? They're very cumbersome. We all know this. So does what is Retrieve DX? We all are, we should be a lot of us familiar with this screen here. This is the Cerner display. We have a mock patient here. We're about to watch Dr. Henry. He's the ED director at Stony Brook University Hospital where R Retrieve was invented. He's going to narrate us through uh, one of these patients here. I'm only going to stop it like one or two times just to point out uh, one or two things that he's doing. But in case I have an issue with stopping because of what happened before, if you just note down here on the bottom left of the Cerner display, there's the comorbidity tab. Dr. Henry's going to uh, click that in a second, and that's going to launch us into the retrieve world where uh, the patient's comorbidities are brought to the doctor's attention. So let's watch Dr. Henry do that and then pick back up. Condition of malignant melanoma. This patient had a trauma, trauma survey done, but there were significant several comorbidities found one so here's retrieve dx right so retrieve is called the entire patient record and it's brought forth all the comorbidities pertinent to this this patient so it's gone through past and pre uh, previous and current records to identify a chronic anemia for this patient so merely by hovering over the suggested comorbidity chronic our software provides the doctor with what the rule is below as you can see and then what the values are past and present for this patient. So all he has to do is validate that and click it into the record. So let's watch him do a few. And, uh, and then we'll pick up in a second. Note that with one click, it pulls up the latest hemoglobin and hematocrit and previous visit, if it was in the electronic record, suggests chronic as indeed physician validates. Notes from the height and weight that there's severe malnutrition a significant comorbid factor. Documents lactic acidosis. SIRS is present, but we don't believe there is a present infection. So we attribute it to non-infectious processes. We note in the record that atelectasis was found uh, in a radiology report. We can go view the entire report and read it in context. And we concur that it is probable atelectasis in the lower lobes, and we document it as well. We save to the record, go back into our documentation, find the diagnosis, malignant melanoma and a subdural hematoma, and to accurately document the findings, we insert the comorbidities. So it's important to note here that these are the comorbidities that Dr. Henry identified when he was in retrieve, and he can still edit these. So it's just to, just to answer any questions about HIPAA compliance and things like that. He's validated these, uh, these comorbidities, and here he has an, oppor an opportunity to edit them if he so chooses. So he clicks submit and takes it, uh, puts it into the, uh, the medical record. So what does retrieve DX do, right? So it finally gives us an opportunity to realize the efficiencies that EMRs promised us years ago. At Stony Brook University Hospital, you had Dr. Mark Henry, ED director. He turned to the CDI director, uh, Clinical Documentation Int uh, Integrity, and she said, Karen, 
or he said, Karen, we've got to stop this back and forth. We need to automate this. We've got the university here. Let's get the computer science department to take this encyclopedia that is the medical record and turn it into a usable research assistant or cliff note, right? So the, these three departments uh, got together and they developed our program, which identifies all of a patient's comorbidities in one screen and it adds it into the record in the proper coding language. So after five years at Stony Brook University Hospital, what did they find? We have uh, white papers written by the inventors to back all this up. They found that they were able to reduce the average time of document comorbidities from nine minutes down to seconds, as you could see from the video, right? He didn't have to go and navigate through screens. He didn't have to remember a previous test. It's all right there for him to give the thumbs up for and validate. So by documenting better, obviously reimburse, reimbursement increases. These are good things for the hospital, but most importantly, they improved the observed to expected mortality index. It was cut in half, right? From 1.55 to 0.8. The hospital's leapfrog scores went from an F to a B. Now, since our software uh, was implemented at Stony Brook University Hospital, uh, their CMI has jumped from 1.6 to 2.1. And at Stony Brook, they'll tell you that the, uh, the 0.1 of a CMI is worth $10 million. So that's to the tune of $50 million that we've made or Retrieve has made Stony Brook University Hospital. Another sort of ancill ancillary benefit was that they were able to eliminate two full-time so full CDI specialists. Now at Stony Brook, that really meant that they redistributed them somewhere else, but it was nice to be able to take those people out of the, you know, culling through medical records on a daily basis. So here's our timeline. So what happened? Back in 2015, Retrieve DX was installed, developed, started use at Stony Brook University Hospital. Now, from then to now, they've made the tune of $50 million. This is an increased reimbursement, CMI, their leapfrog scores went out, went up, all sorts of stuff. So in 2019, uh, Retrieve Medical was formed, right? We licensed the software from uh, Stony Brook. At the same time, we started protecting our, uh, our IP. So we filed uh, patents and we have four issued copyrights. Also at that time, we brought on uh, one of our more esteemed members of our team, uh, Dr. Mark Rosenberg. He is the uh, chairman emeritus of St. Joe's in Patterson, New Jersey, which is the third busiest ER in the country. But most notably, he's the current president of ASEP, the American College of Emergency Physicians, 40,000 members. It's just about one of the most famous emergency docs in the country right now. So he's our chairman. And uh, and as far as the tech technology development, what we had to do when we licensed it from the on-premise version that was at Stony Brook, we had to write it to the cloud. So that took us a lot of time because they use the uh, computer science department. There are a lot of uh, technicians working on it. So there were a lot of what they call fingerprints, right? So we hired a man to... Uh, who's one of our employees to work with the old software to write it on the cloud. So we we completed that in 2021. And that enabled us to then plug into the major EMRs. So we went about the process of getting certified on Epic and Cerner. So at the beginning of this call, I said it's an exciting time for our company. And that is because six days ago, we completed our Cerner validation. So that's obviously something we were pushing for. Very big deal for us. And in tandem with that Cerner validation, we did our EPIC validation. So that's to follow very soon. Certainly don't anticipate any issues. Uh, so we're obviously very much looking forward to that. But what's on the end, other end of that rainbow? We got to have a pipeline. So through this time, since we uh, licensed this product in 2019 to now, we've developed a lot of strategic partners, right? So uh, we are very close with University Hospital in Newark, New Jersey. They're an Epic shop. They're going to be our first Epic install. So uh, we have a weekly call with them and their tech team discussing, you know, once we get on our uh, validated, how we're going to install, how we're going to implement all that sort of stuff. So uh, we have signed an agreement with them. They're going to be our first Epic install. There's no doubt about it. Uh, we've also signed a partnership with Concord Medical. Concord is a uh, rural hospital system. Uh, they have 70 plus hospitals throughout the Midwest. Uh, and their intentions are to implement it uh, system-wide. And they've already given us two 
pilot hospitals, we'll call them, and they're both Cerner shops. So we expect to be signing on, signing up with those two immediately, right? Uh, another one of our uh, important partners is St. Joseph's Medical Center in Yonkers, New York. Uh, they're going to be another one of our Cerner installs. Uh, also along the way, I don't know if anybody's familiar with D2I. They've got over 300 hospital clients. They're a data analytics company, as well as developing a dashboard for our software so that you can monitor, track all of the uh, you know, in, uh, added uh, CC and MCCs, comorbidity, major comorbidities uh, and whatnot. They're, they're actively uh, marketing us to their, their hospital clients. So that's happening on a daily basis. So that's happening beginning 2022, we're going to be in these hospitals. But what happens even beyond that, right? So we have uh, mapping for certain contain containers, we're calling them. So if you, you know, more or less understand what we were doing uh, with Retrieve, uh, there's a geriatric emergency departments all throughout the country. There's 250 of them. For every ger geriatric patient that comes through an emergency room, they have to undergo five certain tests, falls, risk assessment, all sorts of things like this. So this is an example of a container we would develop that when a doctor hits the retrieve button, they would know the results of those five tests. They wouldn't have to go back and find them, right? I mean, congratulations, not only um, with the Cerner that just happened, but it sounds like Epic is going to happen in the next few weeks, which is super exciting. And your data is amazing. So I want to start with one question for you, and then um, we'll move into our networking session so folks can ask whatever other questions that they have for you then. But tell me, so your results from Stony Brook not only have benefits for providers, which improves efficiency, but patients Definitely um, those improvements in mortality uh, scores is super exciting. And then the hospital's bottom line, of course. How do we know that those results that you saw at Stony Brook are going to be able to be replicated across other hospital systems? There's no doubt about it that we're, by using our process here, we're going to be reducing the time that it takes to document. Uh, so whether you're a large hospital or a sm small hospital, it's not going to change the fact that you've got to navigate through the EMR in order to use or to document properly. So there's there's no real uh, question of whether or not we're going to save the doctor time and energy and stress. Uh, but at the very least, we expect sure. that Retrieve would, I mean, we, we think that it would draw a hospital up to the top, 80, top percentile, 80th percentile of uh, comorbidity, major comorbidity capture rate. But at the very least, we can bring every hospital up to the national average and that's uh, uh, of comorbidity capture rate, right? So that, that will improve the bottom line for every single hospital out there.